Welcome to another edition of Real Talk of Colorado with your host, Watik. Today we have a very special guest. We have Colorado's own Stevie Johnson. We'd like to welcome you to the show, Stevie. Thank you for having me. Okay. Um, for those who don't know Stevie, little but bad, um, he's a well-known boxer in the lightweight division. He also has a two-time, he's also a two-time former WBC lightweight champion. Is that correct, Stevie? Yes, it is. Wow, man, that's, that's, that's some good stuff. So we want to get a little into some background about you. So where are you from originally, born, um, and, and how long have you been here? Born and raised in Denver, Colorado, all my life. Born and raised in Denver, Colorado? Yes, sir. All your life? Yes. Uh, okay, so with that being said, are you married? No. You're not married? No. Do you have any children? Yes. You have, how many children do you have? I got six. Six children? Yes. Wow. I mean, so what's that makeup? Like, how many boys and how many girls? I got uh, two boys and four girls. Two boys and four girls? Yeah. And what's that age range? Uh, 23 all the way down to nine. Wow. Wow. That's a, that's a big family. Yeah. Well, that's, that's a lot to handle to take care to feed them, yeah, huh? Yes, yes, it is. I, I hear that. I hear that. So, okay, let's get into your boxing career now. So, um, who or what inspired you to uh, start boxing? Well, everybody in my family was fighters, down from my grandfather to my dad mm -hmm. to my uncles, then me. Wow, wow. At what age did you start? I was seven years old when I stepped in the ring. And how did boxing change your life? It changed it dramatically. I owe everything to boxing. You do? Yes. Okay, okay. And how long have you been boxing? Well, I was boxing so it was, since I was seven years old, and I retired when I was 35. Oh, okay, so, okay. Yeah. So let's a little. Years. Years. Uh, oh yeah? yeah, long time, man. Uh, let's find out about your first training. Um, when you first started training, how was that? Well, m for me, my dad was a fighter. My grandfather, my uncles. It was it was more or less in the home, mm -hmm. and uh, that's where I really started learning how to fight in mm -hmm. the home. And then uh, my grandma used to watch me when I was a little kid, mm -hmm. and I was getting too bad for her to watch. She was like, you know, y'all need to take him to the gym with you guys. Mm. And then from then on. So that's sort of sparking you. Yeah. That's oh, okay, okay. Have, was there ever a time where you thought like you didn't want to box? Yeah, because uh, I used to play football too. Mm -hmm. And uh, but I didn't grow to be that big, so mm -hmm. you know. But hey, it was boxing from 12th grade on. Okay. Yeah. And um, give us a little insight on your first fight. Who did you fight, and what year was this? Uh, I don't remember who I fought, but mm -hmm. it was like 1979. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was here in Colorado. Mm -hmm. And it was a Spanish kid, I know that much. Oh, okay. And uh, I won. You... And from then on, I just kept on winning. Mm. And uh, I was the runner up to go to the Olympics, and the guy by the name of Vernon Forrest beat me. Mm -hmm. Okay, he I know Vernon. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, he had got killed, but, you know, mm -hmm. bless him. And uh, that's what beat me to go to Olympics. And after that, I took a year off. Then I turned pro. Okay. I won the first world championship. Wow. Well, let's, let me ask you this question. Exactly how many fights have you had in your career? 52. 52? Uh, yeah, 50, 46 and uh, 6. Mm. So how many, how many KOs was that? It was like 20, I can't remember. Okay. Do you remember your first knockout? Uh, no. No, you don't remember it? You just was knocking them out when you could, huh? <laughs> okay. And what year did you become pro? Uh, okay, the Olympics was in 92, so I turned pro about 94. Mm -hmm. I took a couple years off. Okay, what was that journey like to get to pro? Well, it really wasn't that hard. It was just more for me of a uh, downfall because I didn't make the 92 Olympic team. Mm-hmm. But everybody was in my ear, Stevie, man, you need to just go turn pro and go back to box, go back to mm -hmm. box. So that's what I did after I got tired of everybody telling me what to do and mm -hmm. listening to it. So how would you feel at that time? Down. Down? I, I should have been on that Olympic team that mm -hmm. year. All right, so d please discuss your success as a two-time lightweight champion. Oh, man, it was, hey, I was, everything to this belt right here, the WBC. I mean, she was on the, on the sides of Joe Lewis and Muhammad Ali. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, hey, this is the best belt to have. You see, you'll see uh, next Saturday Floyd be fighting for this belt. Oh, that's a, oh, with him and Cotto? Yeah, they be fighting for oh, that okay, belt. Okay, okay. Well, I'm, I don't know how this works. So if, if you got the belt and they're going to be fighting for the belt, you keep your title? Yeah, I keep, they just uh, make a new one. Oh, okay, okay. And But see, this was at 135, lightweight. Uh -huh. They fighting at... Um, I think junior middleweight. Oh, junior middleweight. Oh, okay. So they have 
WBC belts in each weight division. Oh, okay. Well, since we're talking about your belts, do you want to kind of give us some um, history and, and, well, and kind of tell us a little story about these know, belts you have? WBC is the most recognized belt there there is. Mm -hmm. And behind me, we got the IBA International Boxing Association. Mm -hmm. Oh, they're so heavy. Oh, yeah. Let's move this one over here for a second. Uh, then we got the IBO. International Boxing Organization. Uh, hold up, before you move, hold up, before <laughs> okay. you go. Do you remember who you fought to win this belt? Uh, I got this one from Jean Baptiste Mindy over in France, in 1997. France. Oh, okay. Yeah, I got my first mini stitches. <laughs> oh, he bust yeah. you up a little bit? Nah, we hair buddy. Oh, hair buddy, okay, in okay. The, in the fourth round. Mm -hmm. But uh, I wanted this so bad. Uh, you know, I just asked my corner to stop it, the mm, bleeding. Right. Because, you know, they'll stop a fight. Right, man. right. But uh, I went on to win this. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So who, who? what's the next belt you got? Uh, the IBO. The IBO? Who did you now, fight for I that? Fought, I fought a Mexican kid by the name of, uh, I think, Jose Alvarez or something like that. Mm -hmm. I really can't remember. Okay. Name. That's okay. But yeah. you got the belt. That's what counts. Yeah. <laughs> what about this one? Now, I fought another Spanish kid. Oh, okay. And where this was at? This, uh, this was, was down in uh, Tampa, Florida. Tampa, Florida? Yep. And okay. I fought in for the International uh, Boxing Association. Was any of these knockouts? Any of these belts? Here? Nah, they all win decisions. They Champions decisions? don't like to get knocked out. They, oh, they fight for it. They theirs. fight for it. Huh? They yeah. hold on, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Nothing weak about them. So tell about yeah. that belt that you have in your hands there. This one was just more or less like a trophy given to me because after I won, I think it was the IBO, mm -hmm. they had just... Uh, gave me this because of all the belts I accomplished. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. Well, that's cool, man. That's, that's a nice little thing. I wish I had yeah. me some belts, but you know, I gave up. I started boxing, and then I got <laughs> out real quick because you know I don't yeah. think that was my thing. I was more of a lover than a fighter. I hear you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, during your course of your career, what has been your most memorable fight, and why? Um, the one when I had lost this belt here at, in Denver, Colorado, mm -hmm. at the Pepsi Center, mm -hmm. and like a half an hour later. They, they changed the decision and called it a draw. Oh, wow. And from then on, after that, it was like I didn't want to fight no more. Mm. It, was just, it was just a letdown. Wasn't in your heart anymore, huh? Yeah. So um, what's some of the things that you have learned from boxing? Trust no one. Trust no one. Yes. So why you say that? Because it's, it's fast money. Uh, you make a lot of money, and, and it goes really fast. Mm. So, okay, this is always a question I always had, like, I mean, and you can tell the truth. No, you, you're not boxing anymore, are you? No. So, if some of those things stay, like, do they fix some fights? No. Or, no, no, that's not. That's not no. true. That's everything no. is real. It's all real. Okay, so that that rumor is not a true rumor. Okay, no. I always wanted to ask that question though. No. All right. Um, how has boxing affected your life negatively, and positively? Positively, it just kept me out of trouble. Kept me out, uh, you know, away from bad things mm -hmm. out here. Negatively, I don't have nothing to say about it. Negative. It's just that you just got to watch out who you're dealing with mm -hmm. in boxing. Okay, okay. Are you currently boxing? And tell us about the day in the life of Stevie Johnson, if you still no, are. No, I don't no. box no more, no. But so, uh, some days I go to my, my Uncle Richard mm -hmm. that trained me. Mm -hmm. He teaches kids how to fight, and sometimes I go by the gym and help him out. Oh, you do? Yeah. So so you kind of give, like, you're like a mentor in a sense. You get yes. in to train some folks. Yeah. Yeah. Is there some, like, some prospect out there right now that you're working with that you want to mention today? No. No? No one out there right now? Not no one. Okay. Well, you know what? I, I want to ask you, what is some advice you would offer to any aspiring boxer, boxer, and what would be the most important thing they need to know? Just stay focused and uh, don't, don't get sidetracked. Hmm. Stay focused. And let boxing be your number one priority. Mm, okay. Well, Stevie, man, it was a pleasure having you on the show today. Thank you. We would like to definitely have you come back anytime you'd like to come back. Yes, sir. And is there any last thing that you would like to say before we got? Um, I want to say, can I say hi to a couple You can do it. It's your time. It's your time. Hi, Malia. That's my wife to be. Okay. okay. Uh, hi, Miss Norma. Hi, Margo. Uh, hi, Jerry. <laughs> Uh, hi, Xavier, hi, Vigor, hi, Diamond, Jalen, Julian, Devon, <laughs> Miss Norman, Leonard, Marla. Uh, that's about it. Okay, that's cool. <laughs> hey, well, guys, we appreciate Stevie for coming on the show today. It's been a very great show, man. Thank I'm you. glad you came on, man. It was, I, it was my pleasure to meet you, man. Thanks so, for having me, man. Oh, no problem. Anytime. Like I said, feel free to come back anytime. Yes, if you want to come back, talk about anything. Oh, you know what I wanted to say, too? Since before we go, like, what are you currently doing now? I'm a lumber. You're a lumber? Yeah. A lumber? 
Yeah. Okay, and what's what's that like? I go up and cut trees. Trees? Yeah, I, my job is rough. Oh, uh, and how long you been like, doing that? Two years. Okay. You you seen the uh, um? It be on the Discovery Channel. Right, right. I see that. Yes, that's that, what I do. It's like that for real. <laughs> yeah. Man, <laughs> so do people be getting hurt and all that good stuff too? Man, look, look at my finger. Got my finger cut off. Wow. Yeah. And it's some serious work there, guys. Yes, I, yes. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to stay here and be a TV host because I don't think <laughs> I'll be, I don't do well with that. Yeah. But, again, we thank Stevie for coming on the show today. I'm your host, Watik, and thanks for joining us. And we see you next time on Real Talk of Colorado. Take care. Right on. Hey, man, thanks again, man. No it's definitely been a pleasure, man. Thank you.